So I was admiring these 3D print and place joints to create articulating little animals. I love 3D printing, but I'm not too fond of having a bunch of plastic toys. Now creativity means trying new things and experimenting, but design and innovation are built upon inspiration. And I was inspired to try making flexible joints out of wood on the CNC. I mean, why let the 3D printer guys have all the fun? Now this required precise two-side operations on the machine. I split the design in half, and this allowed me to cut out the inside ball socket. The ball socket was machined out with a roughing pass and then a 3D finishing pass. You will also see a bunch of alignment holes, and these will come into play in just a little bit. I wanted to replicate this project a bunch of times, so I set up multiple workstations on my CNC table. I removed the piece from the first workstation in the back and drop it down to the second workstation in the front. I heavily used work offsets, saving each workstation offset in the CNC software. This allowed me to drop down a piece, load the G-code file, and hit go on the CNC without finding any origins. It was saved once, load up each time, and I've got a video describing how to use offsets that I'll link to. Now I drilled quarter inch holes in my spoil board and put some wood dowels in for alignment, so you see me here pushing them into it. I also had a temporary spoil board under my workpiece. This is because the round bit needed to cut further than the bottom of the stock in order to get all of the pieces cut, and I didn't want to cut into my main table. Now my first tests were also using double sided tape, but I later stopped doing that because I added some tabs and added a little skin on the bottom to avoid things to get sucked out by the dust collector. So the roughing pass was done with a quarter inch down cut bit, but it didn't go all the way to the bottom to intentionally leave a little thin skin of wood. Then I used an eighth of an inch tapered ball nose bit to do the finishing pass. I spent quite a while in Autodesk Fusion creating optimized tool paths. I wanted to get a good clean finish that required minimal sanding, but I also wanted to not have to work excessively hard. What you see here are the results of 10 different test cuts. Now I normally would have run my dust collector, but I turned it off and removed it so we could see what was happening. Quick whack with the chisel was all that was needed to cut through the tabs on the piece. I used the same two workstations to cut out the tail, and I started doing two at a time because I was making a whole bunch of these for my kid's party. So like before, I flipped it over, attached it to my little mini spoil board, aligning it with dowels, and then clamped it on down and did the second machining operation. These guys were also held together with tabs. The taps were easy to cut with the chisel, but sometimes I would also use a multi-tool. Up to this point, all the pieces were cut out of precisely machined 3 quarters of an inch stock. But for the headpiece, I used 1.5 inch stock because it just fit better with the design, and the two 3 quarters of an inch pieces glued together are about an inch and a half in height. Now, whenever doing a two-sided machining operation like this, you have to ensure your stock is the exact correct thickness, and in this case, one and a half inches tall. If it's a little bit too thick or a little bit too thin, your piece won't come out the right size. It'll either cut too much or too little. Now, I wanted the body halves to glue together really well, so I cleaned them up a little bit on some sandpaper that was just glued to a sheet of melamine. Now my original idea was to have two dowels in each piece, and that way they would align together perfectly, but I found one was more than enough, and two made it a little bit too hard for them to snap together. Now at this point I could do a test fit, just to make sure it would all actually work, it would all actually go together, and everything would turn out fine. Okay, so now on to assembly. And I made quite a few of these, and so my process has kind of changed a little bit as I've gone through and repeated it. Now I didn't glue the dowels in, and what I would do is just spread a thin layer of CA on one of the pieces, generally the bottom piece, which is the one that's slightly flat. And my glue bottle was a little bit old, so I did have to spread it out with a stick. Now it should be obvious, but you start from the head and work your way towards the tail because each joint encompasses the prior joint into it. And like I said earlier, I ended up only using one dowel, 
two just made it a little bit harder to get everything connected together. Later on, I actually didn't even bother sanding off the tabs till after I glued things together. Using these spring clamps allowed me to attach three of the spring clamps on, let it dry about, I don't know, 20 or 30 seconds while I prepared the next piece, and then I could go ahead and remove them and glue the next one on. I did experiment with using CA Accelerator, but I found it was just making things happen a little bit too fast, and I really liked having just a tiny bit of time to position stuff, particularly when I was using only one dowel. So I'm pretty happy with how the snake turned out. I did add a finish to it. I just used a natural cutting board oil type of finish. I wanted something that would be food safe because, you know, kids put stuff in their mouths. So like a lot of my projects, I'll have files available for download. A link will be in the description on where you can get a copy of these. So you could try making one of these snakes at home for your own kid or grandkids or whoever you want. Thanks for watching.